Welcome back. Blake Cousins, we got a special report for you today. Coming up in June, the Disclosure Project, the National Press Club, it's all going down in D.C. We've got Dr. Stephen Greer with us right now in regards to some breaking news of what's going on. And we've got him. How are you doing today? Good. Been slammed. Very busy. It's exciting what's happening. You know, I've been doing this for uh, 33 years. This is certainly the most dynamic, promising uh, breakthroughs in disclosure uh, since uh, 1940s uh, by far. And what we're going to be doing, for those of you who can attend in person, uh, there are a certain number of seats you can get for the National Press Club event on uh, the 12th of June, which is that Monday at 2 p.m., where the media and VIPs will be present. Uh, and then the two days before that, on June 10th and 11th, we're going to have two full days of uh, top secret military witness testimony, witnesses who are whistleblowers from the military in-house, as well as a, a great deal of evidence that's in our disclosure intelligence archive uh, that we have. And that will all be presented over that two day period. Now, the public National Press Club event um, that is on that Monday. And of course, if you come, you can come to all of them, uh, it, you know, if you register now. It's about a month away. So we just wanted to give everyone an update on what we're going to be doing and what the breaking news out of Washington is. <clears throat> As you know from my previous discussions, uh, we've been providing key information to the investigators. Uh, in Washington who are trying to get to the bottom of, of this uh, issue. Uh, and the very good news is they now understand that there really is an unconstitutional and illegal and frankly treasonous project going forward uh, on the UFO issue that does not have the oversight and control of the president or the Congress. Now, because they now know that as a fact, uh, there are things happening, uh, some of which I cannot really talk about yet, but I will tell you that there are big breakthroughs and uh, the, the game is going to be up very soon in the next few months. So what we're trying to do is prepare the public and all of you guys for the changes that are coming uh, over the next uh, six to 12 months as this all begins to unfold. And uh, the National Press Club event and the conference, the two-day conference before it, uh, there will be people coming. Uh, let me just give you some like highlights of some of the people who will be there in person. We have a person coming who was a, a Marine battalion uh, guy who uh, was uh, deployed uh, to uh, Indonesia after the big earthquake and tsunami in 2009, who uh, his, and his five buddies and his platoon after they were dropped off by a helicopter from their ship, came across a massive 300 foot in diameter uh, man-made UFO, alien reproduction vehicle, offloading vast quantities of uh, drugs and illegal weapons. Uh, there's multiple corroborating witnesses to this. They were threatened with execution. They were uh, forced to sign uh, non-disclosure agreements. He has come forward and has been brought into the system already in Washington into a SCIF, a secure uh, compartmented information facility. Uh, but he will be presenting live at the two-day conference and briefly at the National Press Club event. We have another gentleman <clears throat> who was in the Air Force at the Nellis, so-called Area 51 complex and at Wright-Patterson. Uh, who is coming forward. He has been brought already through that system, uh, and but he will also uh, most likely at least be confirming what he has uh, handed over to the government and demanding that this be followed up with. Uh, we have a gentleman who was on uh, the USS Eisenhower when a massive object, uh, as they were beginning to enter, before they entered the Mediterranean, um, and they were in the Atlantic, uh, came over the ship and when they locked on it with some of their targeting systems the entire vessel went black all nuclear systems were taken offline uh and this guy is a crypto top secret uh, uh nsa cia uh, cleared guy who was on the ship uh, and he the full information of that will be provided we have another gentleman who will be there who was at a 
uh, facility out in the desert of California, in the Mojave Desert, a training facility in uh, 2000 and 2001 with uh, two Raytheon um, uh, officials when uh, two different uh, man-made, not extraterrestrial, triangular objects came in that were electrogravitic and silent uh, and which were that he had uh, on his night scopes and saw and learned about them. And then in a subsequent event, had one that was a smaller one come to the front of his car as he was entering the base and all the electronics went down. And the, it, this entire event uh, is a, an unbelievable series of events that happened um, with this gentleman. And then there's uh, a couple of others that are uh, in the process of being uh, reviewed and seeing if they uh, feel comfortable coming forward. One uh, is a man who was at the uh, very top secret state-of-the-art facility, much more so than Area 51, the Dugway Proving Grounds uh, in Utah. And he was working for a corporation as a contractor and was uh, in a facility where he saw in the first time, uh, something that looked like a partial human, partial extraterrestrial uh, person. One was dead and one was alive, surrounded by scientists. He thinks it was an accident extraterrestrial, but something that had been some kind of concocted genetic experiment. The other time he came into a facility and there was a extraterrestrial vehicle uh, that was being examined uh, by a group of scientists in a clean room, as it were. And uh, he uh, uh, you can, has the full description of that, the date, the where, the sector, the part of the base, even the building numbers and code numbers where this happened. Uh, we have his information. Uh, he also located an entry point uh, out in the desert uh, with an area where around a thousand cars were parked with an opening and a small building that went underground. And the scientists that he knew that worked there said that this was a vast facility around 1,300 square miles, not acres underneath, deep underground. Um, then we have uh, a, a series of folks who have given us their information and we have their drawings of various other events, including a man who for 10 years worked in a very deep black project at the Pentagon, uh, where he was deployed to various locations. Uh, for example, to one base that was out in uh, Oklahoma, uh, I mean, uh, Fort Sill, uh, yeah, and, and near there in Lawton, uh, Oklahoma, there was a skiff, an underground facility where there was an extraterrestrial vehicle that was being studied. Uh, and the fact that there was a security breach with someone bringing in an unauthorized person from Booz Allen Hamilton, which is a big uh, contractor for the U.S. government, who was trying to get um, a lead a leg up on the contract to study how this object could cloak, quote unquote, itself. He was also read into projects uh, uh, dealing with, uh, let's call it invisibility technologies and warfare satellite weapon systems, as well as other facilities uh, where there were underground research uh, projects, uh, including in the Research Triangle Park in North Carolina, and also down in uh, Orange County, California, underneath an office building. And he was also uh, had dealt with a facility outside Seoul, South Korea, where there was a huge extraterrestrial vehicle that they had downed with apparently some type of electronic warfare system that was in a, they had to carve out a huge part of the mountain just to contain this object because it was too big to move to any other site and that it is still there. So this is just sort of like, you know, the very tip of a vast uh, uh, iceberg that we're going to start uh, un unfurling here on June 10th, 11th and 12th. Uh, the men that are coming are, of course, very courageous. And uh, we are also in the process of requesting that the Congress pass an explicit bill protecting these guys' pensions as well as their uh, physical security through either the federal marshal system, uh, witness protection, or some other system. So uh, it's a very dynamic uh, events that are happening. 
We've also learned of a senior executive with a major corporation, which I do not wish to name right now, that we are hoping can come forward. He was the uh, chairman. It's a, it's a company, everyone would know the name of it, that was holding the technologies, the so-called free energy technologies. He has the documents for it, but he is, of course, very concerned for his and his family's safety. He's retired, uh, and so we're working with that. Um, we're also working with a group of people in the Congress to hold open hearings on this uh, subsequent to this National Press Club event. And uh, it, apparently some or uh, a few of them could be there at, at the conference. So it's a, certainly the most significant forward movement in the history of our attempts to disclose this fully to the public. Uh, in history. And I really hope all of you can be there. If you can't be there in person, you're going to miss probably the biggest historic event ever. But at least you can be there. We're going to live stream all of it. So uh, there'll be a link at this YouTube so you can get on on and uh, see this live. Um, the entire event, not just the National Press Club event, but the two-day conference where, uh, quite frankly, when you do a press conference in Washington, you got about two hours. If, to get everything in, but uh, we're going to have, uh, you know, more like, uh, you know, 10 hours a day on Saturday and Sunday, June 10th and 12, uh, 11th to go through all of this in greater detail than you can uh, imagine. Uh, so and we're also going to have some really uh, amazing new uh, information on a lot of the objects that have uh, been downed, what they look like, what the ETs look like. We have both uh, the original witnesses, um, military witnesses, uh, sketches, and then professional artwork that's been done by Matt Michael Schratt and his team so that people can see what these uh, ETs actually look like and what the craft actually look like. Uh, we're also going to have a section of all the different diverse um, Raytheon, uh, Lockheed Skunk Works, Northrop Grumman, man-made UFOs, and what they look like, you know, how are they shaped? Uh, how do they resemble and differ from an extraterrestrial vehicle? All you're going to learn all this. All this is going to be very clear. And perhaps the most stunning uh, thing that you're going to see is the list of uh, 750 or so military intelligence and corporate whistleblowers that we now have. Uh, the ones that we can name publicly will be on there. The others, their names will be blackened out, but what they will testify to uh, will be on the document you will see. Uh, you will also be seeing a master facilities list. Well, let me describe what this is. This is uh, actionable intelligence, as they call it, from these hundreds of top secret military whistleblowers where we're going to name the bases, the corporate contractors, the gates, the code names, the, the base underground location, entry points, uh, everything we have is going to be in this document. It will not be redacted. All of it's going to be released publicly, every bit of it. Um, and this is to be used by the military and the Congress and the Department of Justice and the White House to put together a team to enter and investigate these operations and get them under constitutional control. One thing all of you need to understand, there are really two governments globally. There's the governments of the we, the people you vote for, and they appoint people and they come and go every two, four, six, eight years, whatever. Um, that government does not have control over this subject as of this moment, uh, as we're recording this. Uh, the truth is, is that there is a illegal secret government. It is now been the assessment that has been reached. We, I reached this assessment when I briefed the director of the CIA for Bill Clinton. Um, but in reality, it's just now sinking in to some key people in Washington who are in the legal government that this is a big problem. So we hope that this can get resolved in the next year so that we, our civilization can move forward instead of being arrested where we have been since the 40s and 50s. And that brings me to the next big thing that's going to happen on Sunday, um, June uh, 11th, that night, we're going to have the first world screening, 
not the premiere, but because that's in LA at LA Live on July 8th. You should, when we announce that, grab your tickets um, because there's a limited number of seats there. But at this event in Washington, D.C. on uh, June 11th that night, we're going to have the screening of The Lost Century and how to reclaim it. You can see the trailer now. Um, and that will be coming out available to the public on June 6th, so by June 10th. Uh, but this will be the first time you can actually see it on a big screen uh, at the uh, JW Marriott at the ballroom where we're going to be holding that conference. And then afterwards, we're going to have an after party for those of you who want to come and and uh, party hardy, uh, <laughs> have, have some fun. So, um, so that's Let's take a look at that trailer, why don't yeah, we, do right it, now. It, put it in there. Let's just show it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. The Lost Century, the new trailer, it's going to be in D.C. in June. Watch this. No. Unidentified flying objects is an obfuscating term. This is an alternative energy and propulsion device. Between the late 1800s and now, the ingenious inventions and sciences have all been ruthlessly suppressed, confiscated. It reads like a James Bond movie, but it's real. They happened here in the United States. We master gravity control here on Earth, not extraterrestrial. These are projects that are off the radar, even of the people who manage the black project. When someone asks me how bad is the crisis, I kind of don't know where to begin. So there's something nefarious afoot. These technologies would end fossil fuels, pollution, and poverty overnight. That's pretty intriguing this lost century of technologies that have existed, that have vanished, is the biggest cover-up and scandal in the history of the world. Oh, shit. All right, well, you know, it is quite incredible. Like, it's been 22 years since the National Press Club, a little over that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hundreds of millions of people watch that across the planet. I, I got a feeling what you're telling me Today is you've got these whistleblowers that work within the government, you know, verified government retired officials coming forth with this uh, shocking uh, information in regards to the cover up. And you're saying that some of the safe there's some safety concerns. How did these people actually reach out to you? And uh, mm -hmm. and when did they come to you and say, hey, look, this is what I know, but I'm afraid of coming forth. What kind of protections can you give me? How does that kind of roll out? Well, they usually write to our website, uh, SiriusDisclosure.com, S-I-R-I-U-S, Disclosure.com. And under the contact bar um, button, there's a, a list for government whistleblowers, witnesses. And so generally they come in that way. Some of them are referred by other people. Uh, the one I just got off the phone with uh, just before this, who is the one of the Nellis uh, Area 51 Air Force guys, uh, he was referred to me by a uh, highly classified uh, person because this man still works for the U.S. government under a top secret special compartmented information clearance. Um, and he was referred to me by someone on the inside. So they come through diverse ways, um, but most of them through our website. And I would say also anyone who is listening or who may know someone who would be such a witness and whistleblower, they should contact us uh, because there's still time to bring them into this National Press Club event. Um, we're adding to the roster of folks coming forward uh, every couple days now. Um, and uh, I will tell you that we have about two or three new uh, top secret military intelligence and corporate whistleblowers coming into our disclosure project operation every week now. So this is beginning to be, it's a bit much because, you know, as you know, we don't have any paid staff or offices. So, it, you know, the people working with this on me, we're getting a bit, bit overwhelmed, but um, it's, uh, it's exciting because uh, all this is breaking forward. Um, the other big announcement about this is that I have met with some people with a key committee in the House of Representatives who have decided they want to hold open as opposed to classified hearings on this. Um, and one of the things you're going to see at this two-day event on, on June 10th and 11th is an overview of this five terabyte intelligence hard drive that we're handing off to these investigators. And it is 
everything. Um, it, it's everything of consequence and, and evidence on the subject that we can find. Uh, and to that end, by the way, if people are holding uh, government documents or other key evidence that they think we should include in this archive, they should contact us uh, like right away because we're in the final uh, process of at least this first draft of this disclosure intelligence archive being assembled and organized, at least rough organized. I mean, it's going to take a year to do it properly uh, to hand off to the investigators in Washington because this is a rapidly evolving situation. So we want to get most of what we have into their hands by June 1st before the National Press Club event. You, with all the information that's coming forth, especially in regards to this like clandestine black projects, and when you're talking about uh, these ships that are still buried there because it's so large they couldn't even relocate it, <laughs> is, is this going to rile the government up, some of these congressmen and these senators? Because these last hearings that they've been putting forth really don't amount to much, but what you're bringing forth is eyewitness testimony, verifiable uh, people mm -hmm. that work within the government. How is this going to change the minds? Are we going to be able to get access to uh, some of these uh, locations, this ship that's buried? Uh, what's your thoughts <laughs> on rile this is riling things up? This is this is big stuff. Oh, it is. Point. Yeah. Oh, no, it's it's everything is in upheaval. I will tell you that right now. And the people on the wrong side of the law on this are running scared uh, and they should be. So here's what here's what I'm going to say. And I would be very clear on this. It that now is the time over the next now uh, would be best, but over the next six to 12 months to get on the right side of the law on this because the deception with the leaders in Washington is over. And after June 12th, the deception with the public will be over. Uh, but the, of course, as a private non-governmental entity, uh, we don't have uh, law enforcement capability. We don't have a strike team. We don't have subpoena power. But the FBI, the Department of Justice, the Pentagon Universal Code of Military Justice uh, provisions, their, their laws, uh, as, as well as the Congress committees and oversight and uh, the presidential powers all have that ability. The best we can do is to advise them, give them the evidence, but also give them the roadmap. Where are these assets? Which corporations have them? Who are the individuals who are willing to come forward under oath and be subpoenaed and testify about this? Now, the only other way as an organization we could do it, and it would probably cost between five and $10 million, is to institute a civilian RICO action, racketeering influence, corrupt organization. And you can, as a private individual or organization such as ours, you can institute one of those, uh, which is basically RICO is for like the mafia or organized crime, because we have enough evidence and witnesses now to prove that this organization is in fact a criminal illegal enterprise. And so it would squarely fall under RICO. But again, unless somebody has a huge law firm willing to do this pro bono for free or someone who can fund that, which we don't have funding of that amount at this point, uh, then the next best thing and the preferred route anyway would be the executive branch, the White House and the Congress uh, authorizing a full investigation and hearings and if necessary subpoenas and prosecution uh, after a period of amnesty. Now, as you know, a lot of people don't know this, when President Clinton was looking into this before he got waved off by George H.W. Bush and told to butt out. Um, and by the way, we have a person coming forward who I'm hoping he'll be there, um, who actually was with Bill Clinton when Bill Clinton told him that when he tried to get into the bottom of this, that he was pushed out and told to leave it alone by former President George H.W. Bush, who also had been director of the CIA back in the day. But when, when Clinton was looking into this, I wrote a series of executive orders, but also recommendations. One of them was an amnesty period where top secret witnesses and corporate folks, even if they had 
greatly benefited financially or committed certain high crimes, misdemeanors, felonies, would have an amnesty for a period of time. So that they could come forward. In fact, this you this will you will see this in the in, uh, intelligence archive. We're going to eventually get to the public. Um, and uh, unfortunately, Clinton never could take it that far because he basically got threatened and pushed aside uh, when during he was during his attempts to uh, get to the bottom of this back in the '90s. After you know we provided the uh, briefing materials for him, and then I had briefed the, the, the his first CIA director, but ultimately. Uh, we we are very much in favor of there being a, um, a bloodless revolution here, let's call it, like, <laughs> like in Eastern Europe, where this information comes out, the rogue elements get pulled back under proper constitutional oversight and control by we the people's government, and more importantly, we the people, because ultimately secret projects in the government are always subject to corruption. This is the danger of, of too much secrecy. Uh, so, and, and luckily there are some people, I mean, such as uh, there's a, a congressman from Tennessee named Congressman uh, Tim Burchett, who uh, has been very vocal about the fact that the current process of this being uh, uh, witnesses coming before uh, in a Pentagon program the Arrow program that then goes to a classified briefing for a few members of Congress, uh, it's just not going to cut it because, you know, after 70, 80 years of this kind of secrecy, uh, he and many of his colleagues actually are now saying that it has to pivot to an open congressional hearing, but that isn't a, some stupid dog and pony show like uh, Gerald Ford had when he was in the Congress and others have had, that it would be actually a hard hitting investigation. And luckily, here's here's what's important about this uh, intelligence archive we're providing. Because it has enough people's names and information to be subpoenaed, and it has the full facilities list, and I mean everything we've collected of every place that is relevant to get into, uh, they would have enough uh, uh, quivers, you know, all right? They, they would have enough arrows in their quiver to be able to really penetrate those projects and get them under control. Uh, but it's important that people who would want to come clean uh, would be given a period of amnesty because some of them have gotten called up in these projects uh, and they once they were in, they couldn't get out. And if they tried to get out, they would be assassinated. Uh, but in their being in, if they were high enough in the system, they did benefit tremendously financially and uh, personally. So those people actually, if they could be given a period of amnesty to come forward in the interest of uh, the country and of, the, of humanity, I think that would be a good thing. It'd be a win-win situation. Uh, and it's not at all to excuse atrocities that have happened over the years with this at all. Um, and, you know, if, if any, I'm very well aware of the people who've been victimized by these systems and who have been killed and defamed. And so these kinds of witness intimidation, felonies, entrapments, murders, uh, some of the people who've done those things, that's beyond the pale. But there are other people who've been in the system who have not been involved in those operations, uh, who are still need protection, but also need amnesty. So that is one of the things we're strongly recommending. Um, and I think particularly in the corporate sector, because the center of gravity on this issue, uh, when Eisenhower warned about the military industrial complex, he was really talking about this hybrid quasi government, quasi private financial corporate world that has benefited tremendously from the secrecy not only in terms of keeping the free energy technologies away from the public and protecting, you know, a thousand trillion dollars worth of assets in oil and gas and coal and public utilities, but the spinoff technologies. One of the guys I was talking to today who is a Air Force guy, he was in charge of monitoring the conversations with scientists working on the extraterrestrial materials and how they would take it. And if once it was cleared to be OK to go to the public, would be allowed to personally benefit and their corporation contractors to benefit by patenting 
some breakthrough and bringing it to market. And of course, uh, Colonel Corso talked about this uh, in the day after, uh, after Roswell about the early material from Roswell and other crash retrievals. But that project has been actually greatly increased over the last 30 years. And so this creates only a revenue stream for people in these illegally run projects. But uh, it, it, it also uh, shows how, how much the American public has paid for, but then have been subsequently robbed of. So you know, we paid through black budget, illegal parts of the black budget, not the legal parts. Um, and by the way, this is another thing we're going to deconstruct and, and, and uh, uh, disclose and unveil is the difference between the black budget of the United States and the illegal secret government black budget and the, how they're funded and where the inter, interface is. And very few people understand this. In fact, this is one of the first things I've had to describe and discuss with senior investigators in Washington over the last year and a half, because some of the folks I'm working with literally oversee the black budget of the United States. And yet they knew nothing about the UFO issue. They knew nothing about these corporate programs. Um, they knew nothing about the technology transfer and this patenting process. And they knew nothing about the illegal arms and drug running that creates an enormous untraceable cash flow uh, that is clearly a criminal enterprise. So uh, that that's why all of this needs to start getting under control because it's a monster, uh, Frankenstein, that we created through the classified system in the 40s and 50s that then got up and walked off, the, that Frankenstein got up and walked off the table uh, in the 50s and Eisenhower completely lost control of these operations, no fault of his own. I mean, he, he basically trusted the people around him and he was betrayed, um, some, something I can relate to very well. But I think that ultimately uh, it's now time for all this to get fixed. And uh, that's where the lost century comes in. Because look at the subtitle of this documentary, The Lost Century and How to Reclaim It. In other words, it's, a, it's one thing to kvetch and complain about the state of the world and everything and secrecy and cover-ups and blah, blah, blah. But then how do you fix it? How do you reclaim those lost hundred years? Well, there is a way to do it. And that's what's also outlined in the documentary. Because I don't think it's, to be honest with you, Blake, there's no value in describing a problem and stirring around the muck unless you have a way to suggest a solution to go forward. And so I think it's very important that we not just muckrake and complain about the secrecy, um, however salacious some of it is, but we also say, here's how we fix it. Not only from the governmental point of view, but from the environmental and energy and technology point of view, how do we do what I call a time snap, where we pull back uh, you know, we basically back to the future, we basically bring into the now the lost opportunities, technologies that were in a fully operational 100 years ago, 70 years ago. Uh, even the anti-gravity lifter systems, so field propulsion, those were mastered in October 1954, uh, which also, newsflash, here's another talking point to look for at the National Press Club, when they showed the Tic Tac, uh, uh, and I, I've spoken to David Fravor, who is the F-18 Hornet pilot for the Navy, chasing that object uh, there off the coast of San Diego. Uh, you know, everyone's been told, gee, is it from China? Is it this? Is it that? That was one of ours. And what's interesting, we have the information from the gentleman who was in 1991 at a, uh, in a classified operation during the first Gulf War. And being offloaded at, at the Azores Islands from a C-130 transport was the Tic Tac. And that was whatever, whatever, you know, we're talking, what, 30 years, uh, 20, 20 years, uh, 23 years before, you know, the F-18 Hornet that David Fravor flew chased it. And then you go back to a case in, in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, where multiple witnesses saw exactly the same thing, the Tic Tac, floating over the countryside, for which we have the uh, reporting 
and uh, a very good professional drawing of that object. So I think part of this also is, is unveiling the risk of these false flag operations where things that look alien can be deployed to deceive the public, to deceive our own pilots and military, like these Navy pilots, and deceive the Congress and the media. So I think it's very important that all of this come out, but that these these dots get connected so that people understand why this is important. Because it, in the secrecy, and let's call it the enforced secrecy that results in the ignorance on this subject, the Congress, the president, the media, the American public could be tricked uh, into a false flag event, thinking that it was of extraterrestrial origin when it's actually of human origin designed for its psychological warfare value. So that's another whole part of disclosure that has to happen. Uh, and it has to happen quickly because as this train, this freight train's left the station from a governmental investigatory point of view, the question is, will this covert cabal of illegal operations hit the button and start staging things, trick us into a World War III? trick us into an alien invasion, world of the war, hoo-ha, which of course they've been planning for 70 years. I think that time in this sense is very much not on our side. And it's for that reason, I think we have to be able to go uh, expeditiously forward on this. Let's get in, let's get into the whistleblower's head here because with what you're saying, time is paramount here. Is that some of the reasons why these uh, whistleblowers are coming forth now? What is their major concern, and what's what is their demeanor when you're when you're speaking with them? And just are are these regular uh, U.S. citizens? Obviously, they're connected with the military, but what is their demeanor, and why are they coming forward now? They're coming forward now because they've seen that enough of this is beginning to leak out, and when we put out to the public and singer uh, Chris Brown then dropped that link as did a lot of other supportive uh, influencers and it got seen by millions of people. And the point I was making, if those of you who wanna see it should go back and see the, this Ron, uh, Sean Ryan show I was on and I believe uh, February or March, uh, that was an appeal to military intelligence, corporate whistleblowers to come forward. And we made the case for it that the Congress passed and the president signed two days before Christmas uh, in December, uh, the National Defense Authorization Act of basically the bill that funds the Pentagon that had a provision in it for UFO, UAP whistleblowers and witnesses to come forward even with their security clearances and even with their non-disclosure agreements in place and to do so safely without a penalty without legal repercussions and without their pensions or anything else being threatened. So that we announced widely as soon as it happened, if you remember in January and February. Um, and so not only through those podcasts like the Sean Ryan show and many others, but through our own system. And that caused, for example, we had a, a elderly U2 spy plane pilot from the sixties come forward and he had been following our work for over 20 years, but until that law was passed, he was never comfortable coming forward um, to speak because there was no legally sanctioned, protected way to do it. Well, now there is. So uh, I think that that made a big difference and that, as you know, was something that I was advocating and, and over the last couple of years was helping with providing some guidance on the wording of it. You know, the early version of that provision left out all the contractors. And I said, whoa, <laughs> the, we're the biggest center of gravity is in the contracting world. That's where these, it's all at. Yeah, that's where most of it's at. So they then changed the wording to cover those guys as well. So that's very important. But now we need another provision that it more explicitly, uh, w even though it's implied in the current law, it protects their pensions. But also I think we have to get this amnesty uh, period uh, in place, you know, whether it's six months or a year. Uh, I, I, it can't be open-ended uh, because it, it has to have teeth. 
Uh, and, you know, this is something I've been recommending since 1993 and 94. I can prove it. Uh, but I think that now beginning, I think there are people in the U.S. government now who understand that that's really needed, that because now they have enough evidence to know that this is a legitimate area of, of real concern. So uh, in the corporate sector and uh it, and it would need to have teeth where, you know, there's X amount of time, you come forward, you come clean, you disclose everything to the legal constitutional government, or you will be prosecuted, period. So that is something that I've been wanting to see happen. It, and I, I'm hoping that with what we do after the National Press Club event, and we will articulate this at the National Press Club briefly, uh, the rationale for these uh, uh, laws that need to be put in place, uh, because that, I think, is going to be the safest way to get the highest valuable people to come for forward um, who are embedded in the corporate world, like this, this very senior executive which, with a major corporation who wants to come forward, but is afraid of having his wealth confiscated and also his family and he being, you know, quite frankly, assassinated. So uh, there need to be cr very clear provisions uh, for that. And I think once the members of Congress and, and other people in the White House, I'm dealing with some military people in the White House, um, understand the gravitas and the, the severity of the situation, I'm hoping that they will all support those sort of provisions that will make it safer, uh, faster, easier, for uh, folks like that to come forward transparently. You know, the, the information, five terabytes, you're br bringing forth the eyewitnesses. This is going to be something that is kind of unprecedented. We haven't seen anything like this in a it's long, completely long time. completely unprecedented. Yeah. And this is, this is going to be um, something that people need to watch. They need to get the word out. So we're going to be supplying the original links below to all the events and uh, how you could participate in it. But what about the the guys in Washington? This is taking place in D.C. Mm -hmm. are, are, how many people are going to be showing up? Like congressmen, uh, senators? Are they going to? You're going to be dropping this information to them? We so we have no idea. Um, mm -hmm. You know, look, these things are evolving. A lot of people show up at the last minute. Um, this is why we're holding back in the ballroom of the National Press Club a uh, hundred seats for people who could just pop in. Uh, who are these sort of, of folks from Pentagon, White House, uh, Congress, et cetera. Um, and I think the, similarly for the two-day conference, we're holding back a, a capacity for that. Uh, we don't know because there were a month out and, you know, a lot of people who are those kind of very busy folks, it gets on their radar and at the last month they say, gee, I'm going to come. Now, here's something everyone listening can do. You can write to your member of Congress. You all have one representative and two senators and the president. Those four people, each of you should write to and say, this is happening. Here's the link. You can come for free. You can see the entire event for free and provide a link. All right. Now, why is that important? Because at a certain point, these elected political figures need to hear from their constituents because those are the people that put them in office. Uh, and I think that this is where when people are apathetic and don't act, then they can't complain about the state of the country, frankly. I mean, if you don't do anything about it, and this takes, what, you know, an hour for you to write this out and then send it to these four, it wouldn't take an hour. Um, but everyone should take half an hour of their time and do this. And I'd as say do it now, right it now. It only takes five minutes now with chat GBT. But... Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> You know, I, but it, it's everyone can do that. And I know, you know, the people in, in these political spheres, uh, if enough people write on any particular issue, it will be shown to the member of Congress or the Senate. Um, so I think it's very important. And same thing at the White House. I mean, these, these are all creatures of both publicity and what they're hearing from, from their, uh, their customers or their constituents. So, and, and it's also important that people help us find more and more influencers. Um, because remember, the mainstream media tends to ignore these sort of bold steps forward. They all, they want to cover, 
you know, superficial, gee, we don't know what these are, rubbish sort of things. Uh, something like this that's going to have all the evidence, proof, and whistleblowers, they tend to ignore. Uh, and so, thank goodness now, however, with social media and the internet, and people can then write to their members, uh, that dynamic is no longer the, the control of a handful of media moguls, right? So that democratization of the system, which the internet and social media has allowed, we need to utilize that very heavily in the next 30 days. Uh, and then uh, at, at that point, we'll see. I mean, I always tell people, look, you know, an unfunded, you know, operation like this. I mean, we have no institutional government funding. We have a few uh, donors who provide some money and we have uh, some admission fees to events we do, which pays for, guess what? Every one of these top secret guys we're bringing to D.C., not just the ones who are coming to our event in June, but the ones we've been bringing, we're paying for their airfare, their lodging, their drivers, their security. We are not the government. So, you know, people who kvetch about this, I go, well, you know, if what do you want? If you want this done, you know, put your money where your mouth is. So that's the other thing. We need some major donations to come in. In the next year, we will spend at least four hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars on this effort. Um, and we don't have that kind of revenue. So uh, we need po folks to step up to the plate and help us with that as well with funding. You know, th this is going to be a powerhouse. And uh, like you said, you're covering the cost. You're actually putting out the National Press Club. You're streaming it live for mm -hmm. free on your channel. This is uh, something with all the work, five terabytes of information. I've been speaking mm -hmm. with Michael Schratt. He's been working his mm -hmm. ass off, to, to be frank. You know, you guys, there's a lot of uh, moving parts here. Oh, and yeah. So off and get it all together in these three days coming up in June. Uh, I, I, you know, I can't wait. A lot of people can't wait. And this kind of benefits 99.9% .9 of the world's population. It's the exactly. 0.1% yeah. that's afraid of this information getting out. So uh, yeah. this is something that's uh, quite extraordinary and we're excited about it. Is there any uh, last thing you want to add in to this? Well, one thing is that the, the lost century uh, and how to reclaim it, it doesn't drop fully uh, live until um, June 6th. But right now, you can pre-order it on Vimeo. Eventually, people can get it before then. Um, and I also want people just to put on their calendars. If you want to come to the world premiere of it on July 8th, that's a Saturday, in Los Angeles at LA Live, just put it on your calendar. We, we haven't started actually promoting that because we're covered up with this event in Washington. But just keep that in mind. That'll be a great event on a huge screen at LA Live with uh, hundreds of people. And we also have a fun after party there, too. We always have <laughs> work hard, play hard. Yeah. Absolutely. And, hey, and don't forget uh, UFO Endgame to Disclosure. That's something you could uh, catch up right now. It's available mm -hmm. worldwide. And uh, that's been uh, yep. crushing it. We're on a tear with that. It's taking right. the number one spots on Amazon and iTunes. But then The Lost Century is coming around and uh, we're looking forward uh, to watching that. And I'm sure it's going to be very insightful. You know, you say there's it's not just about revealing it and complaining about what's going on. But then there, you have these uh, things in this documentary that gives us uh, ways that it could be fixed. And uh, th that's important. Definitely. Right. It, 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 out, it proves the subject. It proves the science, the history, the problem of suppression. But then it has a very clear path of how to fix it. So every problem that someone finds, they need to find a way to fix it. Uh, and we're, you know, cosmic, let's fix it sort of guys here. So, uh, but that also is going to take a, a, a lot, millions of people learning about this and supporting any effort to bring the technologies out, uh, as I have suggested before, open source, no patents, no holdbacks, no intellectual property holdbacks, uh, the, the initial circuitry and science and physics needs to be practically developed and released uh, freely so that thousands of companies and startups can begin to use it so we get off the current energy paradigm and start a civilization that is sustainable uh, without poverty and that is saves the Earth's biosphere. Uh, it can be done. It can be done in 10 to 20 years uh, just 
but and frankly, that's about how much time we have left before things really take a bad turn uh, from a geophysical and environmental point of view. So I, I hope that people will, when they see that, understand that that's also a call to action. It's an aspect of the whole call to action of disclosure, because part of the disclosure project has always been it's not just the information and the secrecy and the existence of these projects and of extraterrestrial intelligence and what have you, it has to be disclosed. It's the practical disclosure of the science and technology that would give us an entirely new and beautiful civilization, you know, that, you know, our children and grandchildren, I have now 12 grandchildren, uh, would actually have a prosperous, peaceful and, and a very clean planet to live on. So if not now, when, and if not us, who? I mean, this has been dragged on now for a hundred years uh, we don't have another hundred years, my friends, to fritter away uh, the air and the water and the land. It, it, we need to get this on now and, and catch up with the lost century. Well said, Dr. Greer. Appreciate uh, you joining us and uh, you. doing this uh, bite, uh, this channel on both the streaming yep. channels. Uh, this has been great collaboration and uh, what's happening next month in D.C. And we're going to be meeting new people, new whistleblowers, new faces behind all this yes. uh, revealed for the first time to the world. This is going to be absolutely incredible. Be safe um, next month. Buckle up, everybody. It's going to be yeah. huge. So, yeah, thank you. Appreciate it, Dr. All Sandberg. right. See you guys there we'll in D.C. You. in June. We'll see you guys soon. Absolutely. We'll all be right. there. All, all right. right. Bye bye. We'll talk to you.